Well, let's talk about that moment in time for you because you <clears throat> were in Minneapolis at the time. So you were right kind of in, in the heat, the heart of it all. What sticks out to you in the, in the days, the moments when, when that all happened? Um, it was uh, quite certainly the, the most difficult professional and personal thing that I've ever endured. Um, it just felt unreal uh, to watch the city burn and hearts be so broken and um, to watch this divide and disconnection between community, police, and our leadership, frankly. I think the community didn't feel that they had really strong leaders at that time. So how I was impacted, I will never forget the moment I saw the video. Someone sent me the video. I did not know that um, Mr. Floyd was going to be murdered. I didn't know I was going to witness that death. Um, so someone sent me the video, and I watched it in the wee hours of the morning. I was uh, reduced to complete tears. And I can't believe that all of that actually happened about three miles from my salon and spa that I own in Uptown. And so all of the turmoil and the unrest spilled over into my neighborhood, uh, which caused for me to really sit with, what am I going to do? How am I going to impact change? How am I going to bring people together? How are we going to stop this uh, chaos in our community? And I started with a uh, food drive at first because at that time during COVID, there were no buses running in that neighborhood. And after the unrest, every single Target, every single grocery store, every single gas station, everything was closed because of the fires and destruction and looting. And so I felt that that community didn't have food. So we did a three-day food drive until some other organization popped up and began to help. We fed over 600 families. I'm really proud of that. Um, and then shortly thereafter, the businesses were reopening, but we were struggling to get business because the community was so uh, physically unattractive. So I did some research on what makes people feel safe, and I decided to create this initiative, this beautification, to re-beautify our neighborhood with uh, commercial planters and, and um, flowers. And so that was amazing also. And uh, the soil was donated from the Metacolaca Sioux tribe. Um, I called the city planner. He enlisted some different city workers to help us move things around. Over 100 volunteers showed up. It was just absolutely gorgeous to see people healing by putting their hands together in soil. And so that experience helped me understand that things can't change unless we get the people impacted by the chaos or by the disconnect. They want to heal together and we need to heal with them. And so my focus shifted from the work that I've done for the past 15 years is beauty inclusion. I'm a consultant for companies and I help them identify areas of disconnect with BIPOC community and marketing. And uh, I'm passionate about desegregating the beauty aisle, but my focus switched to community engagement because I realized there's a desperate need for communities, marginalized communities to be served and uh, I wanted businesses to really understand that these communities don't want transactions. They want engagement. They want to be seen. They want to feel heard. They want to feel a sense of value. So that has been my new focus. And from the minute watching it the first time, and you brought about something that I had forgotten because you're totally right. The first time that we all saw that video, we didn't know what we were watching. And now most of us can go through and, you know, the, this officer moves here and he says this because we've seen it so much. But the first time you saw it, you didn't know that you were going to watch someone die and you didn't know that you were going to have people shouting to stop. I mean, all of it was so traumatic uh, without yes. that, you know, without the warning when CNN and, you know, all the news stations started putting graphic. But the first time it was just this Oh my gosh. Um, and, and you went from the, the pain to activation and how did, how did you get there? Because pain and, and seeing things like that and being so impacted, we're, we're a podcast. The team is a woman of color, your community impacted, uh, in not just because you're a person of color, but because you live there and you work there like that, like physical community was so impacted right. Um, so it's so easy, I think, to get paralyzed by pain and you moved quickly to activation. 
Where did that come from? Um, I think, you know, you have a natural instinct that fight or flight. And I've always known that I'm a fight person, not a flight person. Um, and for me, I think that fear can do two things. It can paralyze you or it can propel you. So for me, if there's, uh, let's say we're looking at two cliffs and I'm afraid, I just, I'm a person that will run and just jump because I feel that I know what's on this side of the cliff, but I won't know what's over there until I get there. And so for me, it was a matter of, I actually didn't think that my business would make it. Uh, I thought that because I was closed for such an extended time because of COVID. So my salon and spa was closed for three months. And then because of the destruction of my business community, the business was closed for another month after that, just trying to clean up the neighborhood and um, deal with the fires. And, and then also I felt if my business was not going to be a business, that it should be a hub. It should be a space for community healing. I just, I just sat at home and I tried to think of different things that I could do to still use that space to help the community. Um, what was so amazing was I got a random call from Star Tribune and they named my salon as one of the most healing spaces in Minnesota at that time. So they did an article about places to go to feel safe um, or to just have courageous conversations. And I know that they, they listed a yoga studio. One of the businesses was a church. And the other was my salon. And I felt so honored that um, that the work that I was doing was was being seen and understood. And um, yeah, I, I, the, the business that we gained after were absolutely people coming in for services, but seeking to understand how we got here, how we got here as a nation, how we got here as a community. Um, a lot, large portion of my clientele is actually non bipod and I had a lot of guests thank me for creating a space where they could ask questions without being judged uh, because people really didn't understand. So I feel that um, courageous conversations and education is the greatest equalizer. And so by doing initiatives and bringing people together and having these conversations, we're able to build stronger con human connection with each other, which builds stronger bridges of connection for inclusion. And some people will, will hear you say all of that and they will say, well, right, but some people got activated and they took took action and they took their pain to the street and they they showed how uh, upset and frustrated they were and they destroyed things. Did you ever, if you, if, if I could have someone join this Zoom call and they were someone who was part of that, was part of the destruction, not the peaceful protesters because I put them in a very different, very appropriate category. But when I watched the throwing of things, the burning of things. I just saw people that, you know, wh why do people destroy things to, to get noticed, right? I mean, there are people that just like, we're in such pain, feel our pain. And, and you were impacted by that because it was in your community. So if I would have someone right. join the Zoom call who was part of that, that threw a rock, that lit a match, whatever, what would you say to them? I think the question isn't for me, isn't what, what I would say to them, because I know why they did that. I understand that pain. I understand that rage. I understand that frustration. Uh, my energy was the same, but my march was into boardrooms. I feel that that at the time, um, America only responds to two things, and that is war or financial crisis. And the greatest things that impact change in America have been either war or financial crisis. And so the civil rights movement, people view that as a peaceful, um, a peaceful situation, but the pain and the trauma and the physical damage was absorbed by black bodies. So that there was nothing peaceful about that. The individuals hoping and marching for change, yes, they were peaceful, but they were met with rage, with harm. So the way I see that is that is a part of the process of great evolution and change. And so it was full on a revolution. It was full on a war. And I just chose to march into the spaces where I could be most useful. Um, so my, my, my challenge wouldn't be to that person. My challenge would be for people to understand how people get there. And it's because they have nothing. 
They have nothing to lose. They only have their life. They're fighting for life. They don't care about buildings. They feel that human life is more important than the buildings that are being burned. So um, is that what I chose to do? No. But do I understand it? Absolutely. And it's unfortunate that we can say none of that was necessary, but I don't believe the changes that have happened in this world now would have happened without that destruction. So it's absolutely heartbreaking that um, African-Americans have been having this conversation with America for 400 years. And in that space, we've not done much to improve people's quality of life, um, respect for their life. Um, and I think it's until other people feel unsafe is when we start activating change. And that's unfortunate. I wish that we could just have conversations about how we feel and, and, and have that be impactful enough. But apparently that hasn't worked for a large portion of this underserved community of Native American, Latina, African American. So I, I guess I wouldn't say anything to that individual I, because I'm disrupting the same way. I'm just burning down bias is what I'm doing. Thank you.